I've got it. I have got it. We'll open up in a restaurant. Now think about it. A Scream movie has never opened in a restaurant. That's basically the question as to should it. And of course we know now. Most certainly not. It does not. It's not a good idea. But we only know this because of they took the Scream risk. 6. Yeah. And from there on out, after they, you know, they set up very early, they're like, hey, guys, this is a different, this isn't your old school kind of scream. This is that new school kind of scream movie. So from here on out, henceforth, just a bunch of different risks. And <laughs> I'm sad to say most of those risks, about 99% of them, I'll, I'll even just give you, you know, I'll make you wait. I'll mm-hmm. make you wait for it. You're right. I was going to spoil the, the one good thing this movie has going for it. And I'll, and I'll listen, if you listen to part five, I would have not have guessed this was the one thing I liked the movie. But you're going to be shocked. More twists and turns than the actual movie itself. I mean, start off positive, right? Uh, absolutely love Samara Weaving, right? Heck. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I'm borderline obsessed with her. Even more so after seeing her in the yellow dress. Mm-hmm. However, you know, and again, 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 I get, I, as the casting director, I get it. That ass, forget about it. But again, <laughs> opening kill levels of Famous? I love her as much as the next guy. This yeah. isn't Drew Barrymore. Honestly, this I know. This isn't Sarah Michelle Gellar. I know who This she- isn't, well, <laughs> you know what? Maybe, uh, I, I guess Leah Schreier is the opening kill of Scream. I was going to say it's Jane McCarthy, and Jane McCarthy's Jamie McCarthy hosts reality dating shows. <laughs> At least Samara Weaving is not that far in her career. I know Samara Weaving's famous, but I have no idea why I know her or who she uh, is. The babysitter. Oh. She's Australian. She well, that's looks the like point. She's famous enough to be the opening kill. The answer is yeah. no. No, she's not. She's famous enough to be in the movie for sure. Yeah, as like a character. That would yeah. be awesome. You know what I meant? More time looking at her. That would have been really cool. Instead of having it where the movie's just... Then again, you know, if I do need to cast a professor, you mean associate professor? And it's just film studies, so you're so you're safe. Film studies, that's cool. <laughs> you say that, but you know, try teaching a class of 20th century slashers to a heap of hungover 19 year olds. Slashers, huh? <laughs> what's uh, what's your favorite scary movie? <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> Wait, which one's that? Uh, they're referencing. Uh, you're right that for the untrained. You're right. This this movie does that way too often. <laughs> assume people both don't understand what references are and also do understand what references are. Yeah. So for the lazy listener, that was a reference to Stab. Oh, I it was or to scream. arguably, it depends. You could say, as the viewers, it's not a reference to Scream. I don't think in the so movie, I, I don't think they're referencing Scream. But maybe they are. Scream's what we're seeing. They're seeing Stab. Yeah, but they're always referencing it's so meta. They're like, yeah. what if it's a movie within a movie? It's like, yeah. At one point, it t- 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 kind of sounds like some you know, Curse of Michael Myers, and we're just kind of going out of control here. Yeah, and also, it turns out that shtick gets old real fast. It's really cool when sure. Heather Graham was walking around in the shower. Mm-hmm. Now you're just having some girl, and like, not that one. <laughs> hey, crikey. And then she's all like, I need a water. Would it? So slashers, and then, well, I just you know, I th- I think it's interesting. You can really examine the culture of the moment by looking at the tropes at the time, like the mass killer, the final girl, the different rules: don't split up, don't have sex, don't answer the phone. <laughs> exactly, that's all. Uh, it's all cliche. But out of those cliches comes an opportunity for outsider art, a voice for the voiceless, who might say. Yeah, that's why I love harmonies. It's usually meditation on like motherhood and grief and other. Other That's my exact point, because I don't know when this franchise exactly arrived at the crossroads of characters sounding human and characters sounding human adjacent, <laughs> but I really just want to know why the hell they went left when they could have gone right. I, can, I, I, can, I can't take it. I'm going off the grid. <laughs> no more franchises. No more Botox. No more, hey, oh, let's clone another goat. <laughs> and certainly no more sexual harassment losses. What the hell is wrong with saying, hey, nice tits? tits. When did that go out the window? <laughs> There's only one reason why we all want to go to college. Why is that, huh? To get a good job. To get a good job and to earn a good living. Oh, Jesus Christ. Couldn't agree better myself. <laughs> it's a hell of a school, Bartleby. <laughs> that's so crazy that uh, fucking Brian Callen's in Accepted, isn't I know, it's it? Fucking that's fucking nice. wild. You think that would have gotten him a little bit, uh, a little bit more cheese in life? Cheddar, I'm a little more cheese. Cheese, <laughs> cheese, cheese sounds, sounds so dirty, stupid. man. <laughs> oh man, all this cheese—that's stupid as shit. But no, um, I was also at, like I, said, I was adamantly against the whole contrived. What color is the building? I know, because that's how days always. Something grow. I've never fucking asked. <laughs> However, after Samara weaving and walks on the yellow dress, I mentioned earlier. I think I need to cool my dress a little bit. Maybe we should have more scenes in which. The beautiful belong is asked to identify the building by its color. It was all a plan, dude. The screenwriter put it there on purpose. Well, so it we was because this is what the crazy part. Then he, then, 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 then he doesn't see anything red. Ha 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 ha! That's so fucking funny. But what's he gonna do when he stabs her? He's gonna be somebody like, "There's the red." I basically gonna say, "I found the red." Okay. Mm-hmm. And you're th- now, I don't care if you've seen the movie. Okay, pretend, pretend, pretend that you haven't for the next minute. Okay. <laughs> go along with my feelings here. This is my first time watching the movie. This isn't like those other screen movies where I, had, I got to go into it already seeing it before. Mm-hmm. This, this. 
fortunate, probably most fortunately, was my first time watching Scream 6, because spoiler alert, I can't see myself watching Scream 6 <laughs> ever again. I'm never doing it. I don't care if it's like a Make-A-Wish kid. And he's like, oh my God, I found your guys' YouTube channel. And I just thought it was so funny, your commentary of Scream. It's probably so much funnier when there's, you know, when there's no actual recording. You can just say whatever the hell you want freely without the goddamn people keeping you down. <laughs> well, guess what, kid? We're not watching Scream 6. And he's like, well, that's my last wish. Well, guess what? It's your last wish for a reason. It's not getting an answer. That's actually, that used to be the uh, slogan for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. What do you think the biggest flaw of Scream 6 is? You know what I think it is? What do you think? <laughs> I don't actually have one concrete answer. I think, you know, I think it, the biggest flaw was whatever, you know, cisgendered, heterosexual, white male wrote this movie, and it really just speaks to the miles of his privilege shines right through the film. It's honestly laughable. <coughs> this random guy on the phone who can't find his way out of a paper bag asks a beautiful girl to find him in an alleyway for him, and she goes, all righty then, yeah. <laughs> and she just walks into the alley. This really shows the lack of awareness he has as a man. Well, she's also what kind, of, what kind of message are we sending to these women? Oh, you, when you go on a blind date with someone, first off, no. <laughs> Second of all, no. Third of all, no chance in hell. Especially you look like Samara Weaving. That's a dead recipe for disaster. Yeah, really. You're going to come across Jeffrey Dahmer more often you come across Prince Charming. Especially considering the fact that this guy, again, he's like, where am I? Is this an attractive quality to women that I didn't know about? Is this an untapped market to get beautiful Australian women to fawn over me and walk outside and make it a fucking... Who, who is this guy where she's like, oh, he can't find his way around. It's rather hard, I think. Yeah, actually, he's fucking sexy. He really can't good. find his way around. So did she actually meet him yet? That was the first time they heard no. his voice at all. Okay, good. Because so she's no just way. like, hey, where the build? Oh, wait. She's like, you're going to go on 34th Street. He's like, I'm on 22nd. She's like, we'll get to 34th. He's like, which way is that? And she's like, gosh, my pussy's wet. <laughs> and you rush over here and fuck. We should have sex in the bathroom. It's so attractive that this man on the phone has no idea where he's going. Yeah, I'd love to come outside and look around. Oh, you're in an alleyway? Oh, yeah, I see an alley. Let me go down that alley. What kind of fucked up shit is going on in this guy's head where he thinks people operate this way? Apparently, a lot of people agree because this she she's usually the movie. They filmed it. They wrote yeah, she, it. They she, goes that, it. she goes in that fucking diatribe about how hard it reflects the times. What? For, are you saying all bitches are dumb? Why is she walking into an alleyway, man? I thought we had smart characters. The first movie was all Sydney says, hey, why is the girl running up uh, running upstairs just running outside? I don't think she meant run outside and turn down an alleyway, you dumb bitch. Well, it's a new school screaming like you said, so they had to kind of go back to the first movie and reinvent themselves. Right, they had to reinvent themselves. This is a requel. It's a, no, this is not a requel. It's a surrequel. A surrequel. They didn't even, surreal. They didn't even think I know, of that they never in this even movie. thought to add in the douchiest word possible, surreal, and add it to requel. So it's a surrequel. It's so real, it's a requel. Uh huh. They were just like, it's a franchise, guys. This is a, this is a refranchise. It sounds like refreshment, you fucking idiots. Yeah, it's fucking lazy. It's lazy and disrespectful. And not only is it and stupid, <laughs> and not only is it dumb, though, but not only is it stupid that the scenario we've now put ourselves into, the opening kill, okay, the first scene, the first movie, Scream 1's like, all right, girl's in her house alone, someone comes and kills her. That's plausible, all right? All right, how about this? A woman who decides to meet blind date in public space to be safe decides to throw all caution to the wind, walk down a sketchy alleyway. He's a nice voice. They got Not to know each other. No, he an annoying call. voice. <laughs> Not to mention, on top of that, though, she teaches a. Not only is she a damsel in distress, she's a dumb bitch damsel in distress. You know why? Why is that? She teaches a class on slashers. I know. He's giving her. And every she walks into the alleyway alone. Why did she? Why did she do that? Why? Why? You know what the problem might have been? Because she teaches classes on slasher. She was too concentrated on the whole meditation thing instead of the message of don't go down Don't go down an alley. Stop confirming our suspicions that you know just how shitty this movie is and just make an actual good movie. <laughs> now I see something red. He says it. He said it. Some spoiler. He fucking said it. And then I leaned over to you and I said, I told you. I told you. I'm not some fucking whiz kid. I thought that was the dumbest line possible. That wasn't me being smart. That's shitty obvious. That's dumb obvious. That's too obvious. Now I found something. So just to clarify in case you got lost in the shuffle. Fucking, he says to her, hey, what color is the building? <laughs> Something I've never, ever asked. It's the same color as every other building around here. What do you mean yeah, the color is the yeah. building? What are you talking about? <laughs> how about the name, the sign? That's how most buildings are persona. That's how people <laughs> say, like, hey, we're going over to Patty's Pub. They don't say, hey, we're going over to that that, that, that beige building. With the green sign. <laughs> the green sign and that, 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 the, the, the parking lot. He's illiterate. That's why he asked what color it is. <laughs> yeah, he's actually colorblind, too, which is what's so confusing. Because she's like, and also not to mention, too, the building's red. Realistically, who's not seeing a red building? Yep. But they gave you some dumb line like, oh, you know, it's one of those cool new hip places that don't have the sign out in front. Also, again, we're in New York City. What alleyway are we in? Is this the same alleyway where Chuck Bass had those guys beat him up because he was mad about fucking 
uh, Blair Waldorf. Is that the alleyway we're in? Yup. That exactly. one alleyway in New York where they film West Side Story was in? Happening? It actually was happening in the background of her walking down the alleyway. Dude, it's so goddamn annoying when they're like, hey, New York, the seedy underbelly. <laughs> no, everyone who lives in New York is an asshole loser, okay? <laughs> I should know. I was one of them. <laughs> yeah, we made it out barely with our heads above water. These fucking guys, like, in one of the million alleyways that occupy all of the city. <laughs> That's true. Where everything bad happens. Like, yeah, maybe when, you don't think when uh, they were in that whole let's clean up New York thing, they thought, you know what? Less alleyways, a lot of murders happen in them. Yeah, I don't know, no, because the, think about how convenient the alleyways like, are. More alleyways. Walkways. Then, think about it, because then, then, then in 40 years when they make Scream 6, <laughs> it'll make perfect sense. They thought it had. Now, this dumb, 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 stupid, dumb, and also not to mention, too, she's also a foreigner, and I believe, I think, even though we look at this as a character basis, the girl who comes over here who's on a working visa who's, like, come to America, right? The character, Today. the professor. Do, 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 do. She's coming to America. Do, 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 do. I think she's even more standoffish of going into an alley alone at night because she has you that shit think. drilled into her head. They're saying, hey, don't go to America. You'll get killed. All right? She's like, yeah, sure. Here, the animals are the problem. Over there, the actual animals are the problem. <laughs> And she's like, geez, I never thought of it that way. Crikey. I you know? those are just movies. But- water. They have a little water over there. Water. All that shit, right? So you think she's going to be... She's, three things, okay? One, by herself, young lady, gorgeous woman, she's not walking down an alleyway. Mm. Point B. <laughs> and that's point A, should it not? No, the point A is honestly the other side. Of that she's a fucking slasher professor oh, yeah, you're right, who should be an expert in this scenario. I forgot about that, and then last, that the fact that she's a foreigner, you think she's Damn. extra on guard saying, <laughs> well, my father said when I went away not to go down any sketchy alleyways. And what does she do? Goes down a sketchy alleyway wearing the yellow, the color you can see from the furthest away. <laughs> what kind of dumb shit is that? Yeah, it looks nice on her. It does, dude. <laughs> so that's some serious fucking um beauty and the beast that's a belt's bell's dress right there with a hell of a lot more ass <laughs> that was actually the original name that's bell's beauty dress with the ass and the, yeah. was beauty with the ass and the beast and then fucking uh she gets then the most then literally the most attractive person to ever step foot in this franchise after six minutes of confoundingly dumb profoundly stupid interactions with a man over the phone who again can't <laughs> find his way out of a paper bag all right you know what? he didn't sound good looking and you know what he actually he, in that fact, wasn't is good not. looking what happens it turns out oh wait guess what guys flash thompson is the killer like joe manzanello is the killer <laughs> no <laughs> flash thompson like that blonde douchebag with the buzz cut <laughs> no oh the guy from the tom holland one yeah he's the killer <laughs> for a minute yeah for like a minute 30 and also, guess what, guys? Here's the real twist. He knows Tara. He's going to walk past her and say, hey, Tara. And she'll say, hey, Flash Thompson from the third Spider-Man installment. What's up? He's like, people just call me Flash around here. And she's like, no, I've heard everyone exclusively only refer to you as Flash Thompson from the third series of Spider-Man movies. Arguably, the no. They're all equally bad in their own different ways. Every Flash. No, you know what? Oddly enough, the blonde douchebag from the 10 Things I Hate About You remake. Yeah. He, he was Joe Donner, right? <clears throat> Joey Eat Me Donner. Yeah, it was That actually. Flash Thompson kicked ass when he was all like, Peter, I'm sorry about your uncle, man. That was yeah, a good yeah. moment. Hey, look, I might be a bully. Andrew Garfield just elevates people man. around him, all right? Really, I saw yeah, the things they really hit about your reboot. That shit sucked. Mm-hmm. That was the pits. <laughs> <sighs> but I don't, I don't, you know, like I said. Yeah, I didn't like that connection at all that he just passes by Tara. Well, I was going to say, you know, the, the she's brain, a new character and it felt forced. The brain to trust at Disney just saw Jenna Ortega as the pirate in this movie. Because, like, yeah. oh my God, she's a pirate and they gave her the franchise. But then I also was looking, I'm like, is she a pirate or is she a gypsy tramp or a thief? I, think, I couldn't really tell what the actual outfit was five seconds past it. I, I think thought the joke was really funny. I think oh, look, she's a pirate. Yeah. And I was like, I don't think she's a pirate anymore. <laughs> I kept it in there for the honesty sake, you know? Because that's, what, that's, what, that's, what, that, that's how meta I am. That's pretty I can, silly. I, I can just do the same thing this movie does where I can just say something that shit doesn't make sense. I'm like, ah, oh, fucking, at least I acknowledged it. Mm-hmm. Instead of fixing my, fixing my errors. Whatever. Oh, my God, the guy wrote Spider-Man. Who wrote Spider-Man? Isn't this the guy? Didn't the guy who wrote Scream 6, didn't he write Amazing Spider-Man? Guy was James Vanderbilt, I think. Didn't he write Spider Man? <laughs> no, Mark Webb, I thought wrote Spider Man. Didn't that guy direct Spider Man? I don't know. No, no, you think you're right, actually. You're usually right about these things. James Vanderbilt produces Zodiac. I guess that was his last good production. <laughs> yeah, he wrote Spider Man. That's fucking sick. So he knows what a good Flash Thompson is. Yeah, why'd he cast bad Flash yeah, Thompson? Yeah, why did he cast. He wrote Zodiac? Yo, what? <laughs> this guy's insane. He wrote Rundown, Zodiac, The Losers, Spider-Man, White House Down, Spider-Man 2, Independence Day Resurgence, Murder Mystery with Jennifer Aniston and Adam Sandler, and then Scream. Yo, so dude, clearly, White this is an invasion House of the Down. Body Snatchers, and someone possessed James Vanderbilt, who apparently wrote fucking Zodiac, messed with his dad helping him along or something, <laughs> concerned with Scream 6's. 
Rest in peace to James Vanderbilt Sr., the one who guided his <laughs> shaky fucking hand. <laughs> hey, guys, what if Scream 6, what if nothing makes sense, and instead of fixing all my holes I've created, I just acknowledge it? <laughs> it's like when you, you know, when you cheat on a girl, you say, hey, I cheated, but... Just say it wasn't you. No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's what I said. Just, I, hey, I'm, hey, just I, say it was hey, you. Hey, I cheated on you, and... <laughs> So, do you like want to get something to eat or something? Yeah, I'm hungry, I guess. That's what this entire movie is. They're like, oh, hey, I fucked up, but like, who cares? Let's just keep, keep, keep trucking. Like, well, what if we try saving the editing room? They're like, no, no, no. Keep it the exact way it worked. I heard that phrase. But it doesn't work a lot. Uh, yeah, I think it's a lot harder than it. And, it and you always see the director say, well, the movie, you know, the movie actually has th the movie's got three life cycles. It's the one you write, the one you direct, and the one you edit. And that's the one the audience sees. And it's like, yeah. Either A, this was a, at one point Citizen Kane, <laughs> and it got messed up in the editing room, or from its conception with James Vanderbilt at the helm, it was also a complete piece of shit. And honestly, I'm going to say it's that one, because Scream 5 was also a piece of shit, <laughs> he wrote that and too. I really can't imagine that he had back-to-back -back Citizen Kanes, because you know, Orson Welles didn't have back-to-back -back <laughs> Citizen Kanes. So I'm thinking that they're both shitty. And I get y'all give the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it started off in a shitty writing. The director saved it, and the editor ruined it. We'll say it's two out of three phases went bad. I think that affects me that because watching this movie, dude, the scenes don't even—they're not even strung along together. It's just here's the thing that happened in that last scream movie. It's about as loose as here's this another podcast scream is. thing. It's like, hey, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> look at thing. this. So the killer is being killed by a killer. That's some deep shit, man. Cheerleaders that makes you cheering. Think. Cheerleaders. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did, did he write that also? No, that'd be cool though. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be respectable. Uh, that that chick should have wrote one. I would have, I would have harped a lot more on bringing on than fucking Zodiac. <laughs> that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> Wait, and hold, that, hold, Zodiac is almost the same as this movie. How did he do it so well that time? Um, it's a mass say killer. That, we I'm never find out it who it is. It was a shitty, shitty script. And David Fincher. We said three life cycles. You're I'm right. assuming it started off really shitty, mm -hmm. and then Fincher came on. And was like, all right, this is dog shit. But there's like there's like a there's like a little a little cum stain of an idea here. <laughs> It's and right, that's right there. just yeah, enough. And then he made it. And then the editor thankfully saved it. because he, he is like, an he, editor? Probably. I think. Sure. <laughs> he's, maybe. And now, he's, but so then now, now Flash Thompson 3.0 is going to get killed. And yet again, we've never, we, haven't, we haven't heard... We've never heard something so interesting as when the knife went in, it was, she, was, she, was, she was less human. She mm -hmm. was less human. And every, and every time I went in more, she was even, she was even, she was even less human. So that's some that's some real twelve year old shit that we didn't need in this movie. <laughs> Just because it hadn't been done before, yet again, like the whole restaurant thing, doesn't mean it, it must have been done. <laughs> that's a really good point. And it's like, gosh, how are we gonna survive when we, the most interesting character to ever grace the screen is Flash Thompson three with all of his cool dialogue? Like, just you know, when I when I, when I stabbed them, when I stabbed them, <laughs> each stab took away some of their humanity. And with that humanity, I could stab more. And it's like, that's fantastic, dude. That's awesome. That's super cool. You know what? I agree. Whoever this new Ghostface is, uh, this is that new school Ghostface. Not that yeah, old right? school Flash Thompson Ghostface. Kill him. Speaking Fucking of kill him. <laughs> and honestly, too, maybe, maybe, maybe kill him. And then, since it was such a dumb dial, let us see him in the fridge, too. That was pretty brutal seeing his friend there. Yeah, but we don't know who his friend is. Also, so what dumb, 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 dumb dialogue. Fucking... I thought we were going to use the voice changes on each other. Are you I guys know, sucking what? each other's dicks? What? Hey, baby, don't... Baby, please. No, stop. Babe, stop. Why was that the kill? We just saw a guy murder, again, the most attractive woman in this fucking franchise, and then his follow-up scene to that is, babe, stop. <laughs> Cut it out. No! This isn't funny. We said we want to use the voice changer on each other. How would it feel? <laughs> Fantastic. I got to stab. Every time I stabbed her, she felt way and way less. <laughs> okay, Flash Thompson. Thanks. That's an awesome... Wait, you tell me James Vanderbilt wrote that one? Yeah, the guy wrote yeah, Zodiac. I think he lifted it straight from Zodiac, actually. Remember that guy saying about how... I think it's John Carroll Lynch. Die. Eat shit and die! <laughs> dude, why wasn't fucking Mouth in this yeah, movie? Yeah, why that would not? That would sweet. Get Lee Norris involved. I've been fucking... Dude, he should have been the killer. That's believable. Instead of this bullshit. If we get to have fucking... And then they could have tied it back to Zodiac. He really, like, I survived the Zodiac killer back in 93. Right. He's like, yeah. And he really and then, scarred and then he comes, me. And then, and then when the killer comes back for one last scare and charges at them with a knife, he's like, eat shit and die. That would have been awesome, <laughs> dude. So then he... But then also, he kills her over having a C? Not even an F. An A, a D even. No. No, 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 no A. A C. At, at every turn, they need to go left to go right. Yeah, really. 
Or they go right, they go left. It's called subverting expectations. If my professor, if my professor looks like that, she can give me an F. Okay? And he's this kid's complaining over she gave me a C over my thesis. Yeah, it's a pestle gray, dude. Great. What, he probably, also, looking at you, you fucking schlep. There's probably <laughs> grammatical errors on it. It was probably some douchey fucking concept where the character says something as a, you know, something that should ever be uttered on the screen, such as, when I stabbed her, <laughs> she was less human. It's like, wow. Did you, would, you, would you spend five seconds looking up like a psychology video, James? That's exactly what I James did. James was like, oh, yeah. I saw this YouTube channel. It was actually, it was more of a TED talk. It was someone talking about murderers. And I thought like, dude, this is some good shit. And I just kind of plopped it right in here. And I thought, what if that's my character's motivation? Doing a cast. I'm thinking of casting Flash Thompson the third. <laughs> as he's looping the third. And then also we get the best line too. These douchebag killers are like, we're finishing Richie's movie. Which doesn't even make sense. And I can't even comprehend what they're trying to go for there. Yeah, was that even happening in the fifth one? You're going to what? Did, didn't he fail? How, also, as, uh, again, this, you're, they're going to flip the script. On, they're going to flip the script on its head in a second. But this current time watching the movie, when I mean, maybe it's just a key off the key listener. And be like, hey, guys, look, let's see if you can figure out the mystery. They're saying to them, <laughs> they have him say, we're going to finish Richie's movie. But then the last movie end where Gail Weathers was like, I'm not going to tell this story. Yeah, what the fuck is so this bitch's question? Problem. What movie is they finishing? How do they hear about this? Where's this juicy details coming in? Of course, who would have thought Gail Cunt Weathers decides to spill the beans because her flabby mouth can't do nothing less. <laughs> By this current point in time, it sounds like dumb dialogue. And I will fault it for that. I don't care that later on they, re they rectify it. Okay, at the current moment in time, when did they rectify in the first it? 20, when Gail says, I'm a bitch who told everyone about it. Yeah, but no, no, you're not. We've seen you. We, we've seen this character go fucking 180 too many fucking times. Yeah, this character needed to be killed in Scream Two, two. before that god awful hair. Or at the very least, you know what? No, keep her in Scream Three and kill her because of the haircut. Yeah, she deserves it. And then, you know it. what? And then after that haircut, no, kill her career too. Blacklister from Hollywood. No more acting parts for Courtney Cox after that egregious, disgusting, pathetic. Honestly, rancid. Looked like it was just. It just smelt gross. <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> 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 But what about our movie? <laughs> that's, 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 you just got stabbed in the chest. And you say, what about our movie? Your friend's dead in the fridge. Your Our movie? Your friend's dead. <laughs> yeah, wait, what? You got stabbed right. in the chest. But what dumb, about our dumb. movie? We have to finish the movie. Who gives the fuck about the movie? <laughs> Great line. That's so cool. The killer was like, who gives a fuck about movies? Oh, dude, I thought you just made that up now. That was, that was me making fun of the movie. with their that, own. Was that, was, that was fighting fire with fire, as they say. <laughs> well, it works, dude. Yeah, no one who uh, worked on this abomination to my city. You know what this felt like? This felt like Weeds season seven, where they really thought that just being in New York would save the season, and it didn't. Yeah, can we? This uh, movie was like, gosh, we've been in Woodsboro, then we were, then we were in some shitty college town, and then we were in community? Woodsboro, then we were in L.A., then we were back in Woodsboro, and then Only we were in, in Woodsboro LA. again when they were the filming the Hollywood set, and they're in Beverly Hills and shit. Scream oh, 3. Okay, so Scream doesn't always take place in Woodsboro because I didn't notice that until this particular movie. No, 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 because when they were in Hollywood, it was just like, oh, we're in Hollywood. Yeah, what the fuck? It felt this so was uncomfortable. Like, hey, I'm walking here. <laughs> it's like, guys, fuck off with that shit, okay? Let the backdrop speak for itself. That's makes all, that's, you know you know what's cool those movies in the 70s when they're all set in New York and everything looks so gringy and cool and grimy? They weren't, taxi driver wasn't walking around saying, hey, I'm driving around New York City. This is crazy. <laughs> you see those yanks? None of that. It was just like, hey, look how cool the New York City, look how cool the city is. And this movie was like, no, please acknowledge it. That we, we need something to differentiate us. We need to save ourselves. The studio was like, hey, you know, Amazing Spider-Man made a lot of money, and that was that was set in New York City. And then James is like, that must have been the reason. That's why Scream 5 was so shitty. I didn't put it in New York City. That's true. That's, that's put it, that the, the same thing with, It was fucking weed season seven. Like, we'll put it in the city. It'll magically be good. That's not how it happens, unfortunately. There's no, there's no cure. It's not just a band you can throw on a gunshot wound. Yeah, unless you, like, start in New York, apparently you can't ever bring the franchise to New York. It just gets too stupid. J yeah, Jason takes Manhattan. Ridiculous. If yeah. Jason started off in Manhattan, I would have been like, yeah, of course he takes Manhattan. He lives there. It's his, it's his island. I'll argue that's the one anomaly of the rule. I, I think Jason takes Manhattan actually works really well. Uh, no, you don't. You're just being a contrarian piece of shit, stupid moron. Dumbass, loser. No, I'm pretty sure it's the thing I said. You're being a James Vanderbilt. That's that. That's, that sums up all those other words I just threw in there. <laughs> and we get some more amazing dialogue. My father was Billy Loomis. He made. He was a serial killer, and they made a movie yeah, about I, I, him. No, 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 he wasn't. I know serial killer, dude. No, he wasn't. Not only was he not a serial killer, he wasn't your dad. It's yeah, true. Again, when is sexually repressed? You didn't repressed? know who he was until you happened to stumble upon that's that true. diary. That's true. He's your biological father. He's not your dad. Just get over it. Get, I agree. Get over it. I mean, at this point, sure, she doesn't have to get over the trauma of what happened in Scream 5. Yeah, of but course. But she's creating, she's, she's manufacturing this whole Billy Loomis drama. Yeah, just because your dad happened to, you didn't know that. 
You didn't know. And she's like, she's like my dad's got a spermless liar. <laughs> how, 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 when did Billy Loomis find time to have sex? The whole point of the fucking movie was he wasn't getting laid. And if he cheated on anyone, it would have been fucking Tatum. I know, and he killed her. All right? I don't think she's going to have suddenly 20 years later yeah. a girl who's in high school who's not. Nah, nah. Yeah, anybody he would have fucking cheated on Sydney with, he killed that night. And also, how is this girl only 20 years old when Scream came in like 1990? How old is this character supposed to be? She feels, I mean, she looks like she's 17. No, she's supposed to be like fucking 27, I thought. Isn't she like yeah, five but she years like old? Yeah, she's like a teenager. She's playing, my point is there's no, there's no age difference between her character and Jen. She's hanging around with all of Jenna Ortega's friends. That's true. They all feel like they're 20 some year olds. Right, they're all in the same grade, it feels like. But somehow she's supposed to be, what, she was born in 1996? At the very latest, 1997. Yeah. yeah you know, I don't think, again, point. Billy said he had a pretty tough schedule. He got arrested in the first movie. He was trying to have sex with Sydney in the first movie. He was setting up, he was killing people in the first movie. When he's like, right, I'm going to go sneak off and have sex with some random girl who's not in the movie. Based on the fucking revelations in the third movie, that planning was going on for about a year in advance. So that whole year, I don't think he's doing much banging. I and again, he, the whole point was he's not getting laid. And honestly, if you backpedal enough, the age group, he, he would have been too young to bang anyway. So there's no real room for error here. And then she says they made a movie about him. And then the, uh, the the fucking therapist is like, I thought it was about Sydney. No, he says, yeah, they certainly did. Excuse me? What kind of response is they are judging your, they're judging her? Yeah, they did. And I was like, ew, her, ew. Her father she never met 40 years ago killed some people. They also, certainly did. And then she says, last year I found out my boyfriend was also a serial killer and only dated me because of my father. <laughs> Him and his psycho serial killer girlfriend treated killing, tried killing me and my friends, and somehow it got online and people think I did all of this. It's like, can we slow the fuck down, James? <laughs> back to back lines giving us the recap of what we missed. Really? <laughs> To a therapist? Well, hold on, hold on. This is essentially Ghostface takes Manhattan. And how does every fucking Friday the 13th movie start off? A recap of the, the previous movies. Movie. That's actually pretty meta. Yeah. That is pretty meta. He we didn't give him credit. Father. He's actually a genius in the crowd. People think I'm the killer. What a dumb, silly little horse recap of Scream 5. <laughs> and then she starts talking about Reddit or something. And then she's like, I stabbed him 22 times, slit his throat, and shot him in the head. And then it's like, what was to think here? Oh my God, Sam is so crazy. It felt right. It felt so right. Yeah, she's definitely cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. It definitely has nothing to do with the fact that she was defending herself. That's for some no, reason lost in the shuffle. Doesn't the fact that her, you know, her sister was at stake. Fucking, you know, there were two other women there. She's trying to save, you know, Sydney and Gail because she felt responsible subconsciously for her father's actions twenty years ago. Right? Mm -hmm. I get all that. I understand. Okay, it's not anything because of her six month commitment to Richie who who fucked her and then abused her and lied to her and hurt her. No, 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 those things or make her feel good about getting him killed none of that was justifiable or deserved no 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 no. she's crazy that's the storyline we're going with instead of having her be it now you know she's gone through some shit and now suddenly instead of being sarah connor in terminator one she's sarah connor in terminator two <laughs> like no she's a dumb crazy bitch that's your main character well to steal your line dude it's a tough age for a young woman jumped the gun so 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 crazily ahead that what? payoff will pay off later you shut your little fucking slut mouth okay, okay? <laughs> trying to steal my thunder how dare you so my point is i think sam's uh not fucking crazy maybe she's uh, on a doing the right fucking thing and also <laughs> please dr stone that's a porn star name all right dr stone works alongside dr hardcock <laughs> dds and i'm just uh, it's the details He's not quick to handle the details. He's, James Vanderbilt cannot handle right. He can't come up with character names. He can't come up with how to naturally have a character say something. He can't come up with how humans interact. He can't come up with good story beats. He can't come up with a good idea. A good a Honestly, it begs the question that he even has a grasp on the language not to, to turn any papers into the studio. You got lucky with Fincher gripping a script. Yeah. He's like, where's a nice piece of shit? <laughs> and he saves the fucking day. It's that third cycle of the movie. And also, is he not a licensed psychiatrist? Who the fuck is equipped to handle these things if not? He literally says to her, I'm not equipped to handle these topics after she talks about how it felt good to murder someone. It's like, if it's not you, who the hell is it? And why the hell am I paying you? That's just her neighbor. That's just, she just walked into that guy's house and started talking. Like, Can you fucking leave? Honestly, Sam's the most self-absorbed woman of all time. I wouldn't be surprised if she did just approach her neighbor and say, you know what? Mm, you look like a therapist. <laughs> I'm not. Well, you're mine now. <laughs> And then he says, by law, I'm required to report this. No, Sam is right. Report what? Yeah. Yeah, actually, that's true. But also, by law, isn't he For not? For what? Isn't it the doctor, patient, uh, confidentiality? For what? Yeah, that's exactly. That's my point. She's saying, she didn't even say she has plans of doing it. She yeah. said it felt cathartic to do it, okay? Laughter is cathartic. <laughs> it's, the energy that moves through the, it's the energy that moves through the fucking audience. 
And if he's a fucking uh, psychiatrist, shouldn't he be brain enough to go, no, no, Sam, you're you're just, you, you defended yourself. Hey, dude, do some Halloween shit. Say, Michael, Michael, go get some stop. Candy. Michael, stop. Over and over again. Do that to Sam. That'll work. Do some, do some Loomis shit since you love saying Billy Loomis all the time. Do some Dr. Loomis shit. Make, make everyone who, who somehow didn't realize what you are doing in the first movie calling him Billy Loomis paying homage to the character. Just really drive that point home too, James. You love doing that with everything else. Let's use the narration until it's fucking off the goddamn number two pencil. <laughs> And then Sam calling Tara with the flashing uh, blue and reds behind her. It's actually, I'll, this is, seems like a pretty opportune time to bring it up. Fucking hot. <clears throat> Sam looks fine she's, in this she's, movie. She's fucking dynamite. Wow. Smoke show. So Six is actually a hell of a lot better than the Six show. has that going for it. But then right after they have Sam walk off from the flashing red and blues, which uh -huh. is a great backdrop against just everything. Uh-huh. And say, like, hey, they're in New York. You know, they're like, hey, look, it's the, it's the fucking cops. We're in New York. NYPD. <laughs> <laughs> then they try. Then 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 they think they're Edgar Wright for a moment. And they're like, oh, he's directing this shot. So let's do an opening scene of the door with all those quick cuts. Except for, we're not going to do anything like you know, like it's actually just going to be like just three quick cuts. It's actually going to be a really half-hearted attempt to do the Edgar Wright thing with like, oh look, motion transitioning, and we're also not going to do it ever again in the movie. It was a one-time thing, and it wasn't used for like a cool suit-up montage. It was literally used to show a character getting into her house. All right, moving on to the next thing. <laughs> Thanks, James. <laughs> but then again, they say the day because now we're in the kitchen. You know what's crazy about the kitchen scene? Sam also looks particularly get so goddamn hot. Yeah, she had that. She, had, she, had, she was really bringing her A game with. Uh, with I really one. thought for a split second that this movie was gonna have uh, a set of cojones mm. on it. You know, mm. and I thought just maybe by the by the, just the, the grace of God, perhaps <laughs> they'd have something interesting here. And she was gonna open up the fridge to get a glass glass bottle of white wine or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So Sam seems like a fucking Chardonnay kind of girl, unfortunately. And no one wants a Chardonnay so. kind of girl ever. All right, <laughs> not ever. Tuh, tuh, tuh. Not even if there was a fire. Okay, <laughs> never ever. But I thought for a second she's gonna open the fridge and see Tara's body all cut up, and like oh, this movie just sick. killed Jenna Ortega, the only nice. person who's getting ticket sales. Yeah, that would have been fucking insane. A lot of them from Yellow Jackets. No one, no one here is a massive Yellow Jackets fan saying, "Hey, let's see what Mindy's up to." All right, it's a lot of Wednesday fans saying, "God, could Jenna Ortega get any better looking?" I don't, I don't know. She, I think it's. I think it's I think oh, it's speaking of the there. devil, hey, it's Mindy. Hey, wow. is she the girl from Yellow Jackets? She is actually. I'm surprised you caught that. Yeah, I actually only wanted to see this movie because I love Yellow Jackets. You know, what I wondered too when I saw her, when I saw Mindy. I was like, you know, I wonder, I wonder if it bothers her being at a house party so soon after almost being brutally murdered at a house party. I don't think it does. Oh, hey. There's this random girl in the red bucket hat. Just to ask that question, I was wondering. Let's hear what she's got to say about it. what is, what what is what does Minnie got to say about the question that I totally had that I definitely thought of and that wasn't totally a weird thing to ask in that scenario. Also, I get that we're meeting the characters again for the first time, mm -hmm. but why are the characters meeting each other for the first time again? <laughs> How about again, just possibly instead of that whole human adjacent dialogue, we just have human dialogue. James, go out, talk to someone, someone, talk to a person, it's and really see how they respond to you, and try to parrot that back into this mindless script. It's really hard to try to just recreate that human interaction. Yeah, that's the most challenging part, man. The scariest part of the page is it starts off blank, man. <laughs> okay, James, here's... Hey, take your finger out of your ass. Chocolate-colored pretzel? And put it on the pulse. <laughs> so now, uh, how does it feel to get so brutally murdered after being at a brutally murdered house party? It's a random girl asks the question, what's the answer going to be, right? Yeah, what um, is it? I don't even remember this part. At the house party. No, I remember the house party. I remember this dumb question because it's just this whole movie. I, well, I, I blocked I, a lot of this. It stood out to me because how much I was wondering how Mindy would handle being at a house party so soon after she was almost at a house party where she got murdered. I was numb to the first 40-ish minutes. I wonder why. I it was so good you were mesmerized. You are in a transical state. No, I think it was... Uh, maybe. 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 I, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe Black that's what it was. like, wow, your eyes bulged out. That's Colors. awesome, man. It's really good, though. It's a good thing we hit the ground running here, and instead of letting us think, oh, hey, there's Mindy. Maybe let's talk about her new haircut or anything else. Let's talk about the party. The men, no, how you know how parties just. Let's talk about how meditation of the trauma is the party. Let's, let's talk about Mindy that. continuing the trend of having a worse haircut when the sequel comes around. Everyone, her hair's beautiful in five. I liked how curly her and crazy and frizzy her hair was. Why'd she yep. chop it all off in five and six? Because it's a meditation of male expectations. Yeah, like wow, I, I and wow. that I fell right into their that shame. the future is female and fuck the patriarchy. James Vanderbilt, I'll give him credit. There's one thing he can do. It's subliminal messaging. He's a he's a he's a he's a goddamn poet. All right. His ability to just have those underlying messages, right? Like the constant, you know, you know what? You know what? Fuck the cops, right? That that whole thing. Like, hey, you know what? Fuck them. All that shit they got hit, hidden in there. Uh -huh. Ma Maestro. Absolute master of master of his craft. Master of his own domain. Yeah, we really weren't giving enough credit before. 
And then really, but really, honestly, we danced on the question long enough. You're all wondering, just like we were in the movie, what does Mindy think about being at a house party so soon? Is it is it traumatic for her? You know what she says? I don't remember. No, nah. <laughs> I don't. It's not. No, nah. like getting struck by lightning twice. Odds are incredibly low. And it's like, yeah, yeah. That makes sense with a random occurrence. Like you said, well, what are the odds I go on two roller coasters that both go off the rails? Uh, Pretty slim. Or getting struck right? by lightning, like you said. Or perhaps getting struck by lightning. What are the, what are the <laughs> chances, right? What are the chances that lightning will strike twice? We don't know. I'm not so sure that's so fucking applicable when it comes to a goddamn person who's directly chasing after you, especially when your chuckle fuck uncle, who you f flick the bean to every night because you're a little fucking weirdo, <laughs> died in his sequel at college where you are now after surviving the lightning strike his senior year. Six months later, what's fish food? <laughs> isn't she a horror buff? Isn't Minnie the, isn't she the new Randy? Yeah, she's the new Randy. Honestly. I can say, you know, you know what, you know, fine. They cut off her gorgeous curls because they thought, you know what, if we if we were to give Randy a goddamn troll look and give him a little leprechaun beard and everything else and some sideburns, yeah. we might as well ruin this look too. Yeah, and, and it's like it's saying, a very simple formula. But she's a horror buff. She's a goddamn horror buff. Why on God's green earth does does your short haired head ass think that these rules don't apply to you all of a sudden? She's like Samson, dude. Her hair is gone. She fucking she lost all her work. strength. I actually fucking like that, Robbie. That's the, that's why I want out of you. One Thank every you. episode. Yeah. And then we get it. She's super cool and she's fucking awesome and she's so strong and fran fucking fantastic. But how about we meet in the middle here and she's at least lukewarm on the trauma instead of cool hand Luke? Because it's really, really goddamn obnoxious when you're in a spoon feed me the point of making me think, oh, is this traumatic for her? So then just say, no, it's not. So then why the <laughs> hell did you ask it? <laughs> Begs the fucking question, does it not? Does it not? And then it's, uh, hi, I'm Frankie. That's great. Who's I am fan. That's my goddamn point. Because you know what? I thought when Frankie came on the screen, he said, hi, I'm Frankie. I thought, hi, I'm fantastically uninterested in knowing anything about you. <laughs> Thanks. You're a dick. Okay? <laughs> he fucking sucks. That's the one that uh, that random guy who looked like, like hey, well, let's get the little, uh, we're in New York. Look at this guy, Frankie, eh? <laughs> Jenna Ortega's talking to him. It's that guy. Oh, who's, that yeah, guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold, yeah. yeah. So then Mindy's brother. That was his, that, hey, look, it's that guy from New York, Frankie vibe. That exactly. was totally that totally, character. Hey, Frankie. Yeah. How's your father? You know? <laughs> so then Minnie's brother and his friend, they just, you know, they stop, drop, and roll. And they should just fuck at this point because the sexual tension is just unbearable between these two siblings. Uh -huh. And then I'm it's also... I'm sorry. You didn't stress enough how unbearable Unbearable. I uh, okay, I get it, man. She's not actually your sister. I understand that. But for the sake of the movie, can you at least pretend... Can you pretend? Dude, that's asking wait. First of all, this guy already gave us the 180 of not hating him this go around. I know. Dude, whoa, 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 whoa. Dial X snay on the Chad say. All I'm saying with the Sit down. All I'm saying is you're Sit expecting down. too much of the poor fellow. I'm also so wildly confused on what's happening in this scene, in this entire frat party, and even more so about what's going on once again between the ears of this Mr. James Vanderbilt and that dull void he calls a brain. <laughs> I can't follow who is in the wrong here. That seems like that should be an important situation in this scenario. For some reason, one, that seems less based in character and more based on this happens, so then this happens, and then this, which means that then I would do this, and then because of that, this happens. That's screenwriting 101. Screenwriting. They always say, instead, they always say, the way your screenplay should flow is, well, they did this, so then I have them do this, and then because of that, this happens, so then they go over here, and then after, well, then they, so then they, well, then they chase. So now they're gonna go here instead, and then after that, I figured they could go over here, and then after that, maybe this happens, and then maybe like maybe that. Hey, you know you like you liked my Samson thing before. Yeah, I'm gonna drop this one. You ready? Right. Well, that's you wanna know what makes this one so special. It's not just a screenplay; it's a screenplay. Nice man. That's, we got two for the price of one, man. That's 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 some surrequel shit right there. Right. But no, so just to the straight. Tara wants to fuck Frankie. Sure, maybe not the best choice, admittedly, but her shitty choice to make, nevertheless. And one she seems uh, rather fucking set on making. <laughs> then cock block one and cock block two show up. Mindy's brother, Chad, and Mindy's new cho chew toy. Not Mindy, because I guess she's really comfortable on that couch over there being cool hand Luke. Trauma doesn't fuck with me. Dude, she's so, in the last one, too. I, I know. Say, she's like, the, I she's like the, the worst. It's, it's Mindy and Sam are in a constant battle to be. Who can be more annoying this movie? <laughs> and honestly... It's definitely a mini, but we'll keep we'll, we'll pretend like it's not. I, I, some things I want to save to the end, no jumping ahead. That one I want to, I'll put that to bed right now. It's most certainly mini because, like I said, instead of Mindy, a character we know coming up to this, to Frankie, who again, just to clarify, Jen Ortega, it seems very interested in fucking, okay? Mm -hmm. Instead of Mindy going up there with her brother Chad, she's like, all right, uh, Chad and Chew Toy, you go up there. You guys, I'm going to sit over here and I'm going to, 
I'm going to save your seats. No, don't want to lose our good spot. But, like, also, why is it that, that Mindy can move on her relationship? Why is it Chad can kind of go bang, bang 10 chicks at college already? Why right. is it Sam can go fuck the neighbor, but, like, Tara can't move on and I just know. do what she wants to do? It's ridiculous. They created a scene, and then they have Chad shove the guy, even after Tara says she wants. And, yeah, and I her, get... I'm sorry. Her dad's not even the killer. She can have sex. She didn't do anything wrong. Exactly. Sam's she's, dad's she's the, Sam's killer. the killer. She should be celibate. Exactly. And, yeah, sure, I get that he's egging, the, he's egging Chad back on, Frankie, by saying... Uh, yeah, she wants it. But you, you really, you hit him because you hit him because of that? <laughs> yeah, because of that. Yeah, because of this. And then new school Sam walks in hot as all hell. But, you know, she's all, hey, who who dare, hey there, hi there, who dare, I'm here, right? <laughs> and what does she do? She's like, I'm just tasing the guy in the schnutz. She just, and, and she does it. She says, hey, hi. Oh, hey, I'm here. How are you? I'm going to uh, tase you right here. Frankie, with the reaction time of a snail, takes it and she does it. He's I like, think we bluffing. skipped the scene establishing which this random character deserves this. <laughs> and Tara rightfully so. Jenna Ortega can do no wrong. What is she what is what is she how does she respond? The exact way I'm feeling. What the fuck, Sam? Yeah, why is uh, Jenny Ortega the only one who's passively human? I don't know. Passively is mean. She's the one who actually is, in fact, human. She's the only human movie. character in this movie. I think it's honestly her acting ability. Did she read the script or is it script? all improv from her? She's like, I don't read scripts. She's very Marlon Brando. Like, I don't read scripts. It feels unnatural. I'll just play along to the room. I'll respond. Trust me, all right? Howard, whatever their dialogue is, I'm going to respond in the perfect way for them to get their next line out. I don't need to read nothing. That took balls. <laughs> You and then anything promoted. James Vanderbilt responds, who's definitely a woman half his size, telling him what to do. That's very evident. That's very. Look, at, I'll show you a picture. Tell me, tell me, I'm wrong. <laughs> look at this guy's. Look, look at him. If there's one thing he's into, it's what I just described. It is absolutely. You can't right. have facial hair like that and not. It's impossible. It's it, an impossibility. It's actually in the guidelines. It's actually. It's in. Yeah, when you go to the bar. It's in the bylaws. Oh, it's, it's, it's in the by. It's, it's, that's a bylaw. <laughs> that was a bylaw. <laughs> so then she is what the fuck, and then she's more upset. She, even though she is more upset, this is, this is one of those moments where it's like the less human James Vanderbilt sh stranglehold took over mm -hmm. because she's more upset about her sister stalking her and less about her sister assaulting her fuck thing from a second ago. <laughs> and even if he's still down to clown, that shit's, you're, he's going to be, he's going to be singeing your, you can't come. That's going to be electric. That's going to be some, he's going to go home and whack off for a few hours, get all those electric bolts out of him, man. That's going to be some and super charge before you even try it. Honestly, too. that's some wild shit right there. And I can't imagine how this scene plays out, though, in reverse, where it's the pretty drunk girl bringing, uh, bringing the traumatized shy guy upstairs to get him out of his shell upstairs for a good time, and then his brother comes over with a taser and just gives her 6,000 volts straight to the cunt. <laughs> I can't even imagine how that scene plays out in any scenario without, without Leslie Nielsen being a part of it. Well, you know what I bet you didn't know? What? That guy, Frankie, he's right. actually Shocker in the upcoming Spider-Man movie. And that's what played out that way, where yeah. he goes to hook up, and then he ends up just like, hey, get off my brother! No, no, he got electric, yeah. He got electric nice. powers, is what I was saying. Oh, yeah, so that, I didn't even get right. what you just said. That's awesome, man. Good for you. <laughs> but again, yeah, so what? If she wants to hook up with some asshole, it's her decision. And really, really, let's not judge a book by its cover because what, his name's Frankie. What, he's a, he's a criminal? And that's a really good call. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know Italian-Americans are the most marginalized <laughs> group in this country. You can't take one step without someone thinking you're in the La Cosa Nostra. It's vafangul this and vafangul. It's, it's fucking, it's, it's, it's sickening. <sighs> And then Sam is asking, uh, she's like, uh, I, 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 uh, have you seen the counselor? The scene that no, we just Sam, saw a second ago? No, Sam, I'm not a fucking psycho tasing people just because I feel like carrying a taser around. And then Sam's like, are you ask, Are you seeing a psychiatrist? And like, was that scene supposed to happen before we saw how dumb and stupid her fucking shrink was with a moron who was incapable of handling it's her neighbor. his we job? We established this. It's not, a, it's not a shrink. Yeah, Jenna. What? That's her neighbor. That's oh, I forgot about that. Forgot. We changed that canonically. That it's actually her neighbor. That's, that makes more sense plausibly because he was a bad, terrible, terrible shrink. All right. I've seen pornos in which the guy sit, listen to the girl talk for two minutes and says, "You know what it sounds like? You know what? Wait, let's do an exercise. Close your eyes. Ten seconds pass. His cock is there. She's like, you know what? You're right. I should cheat on my husband. Okay. Well, I've that's seen, good therapy. That's better therapy than this movie. <laughs> This movie, the guy's like, "Oh wait, you want me to do some therapy work for you? Not, not really in my, not in my, not in my. Uh, Let me that's not my right job. There. Sounds to me like everything you were saying is completely right, and everything Bob is saying is completely wrong. Yes, I honestly would have preferred that, and he's just drawing her naked. <laughs> that would been a that would been a cool little scene. You want to go to a party later? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> but no, honestly, yeah, Jenna, live your life. Don't let three days define you. Just fuck. And Sam is the worst. Tara fucking knows it. Sam fucking sucks. Sam does fucking suck. Me and my friends fucking hate Sam. 
No matter how sexy she may be. Yeah, it makes it hard to hate her, but we still we still hate her. Also, though, then Sam gets her uh, comeuppance and some sweet, you know, super what an activist. She just throws up and she, so, she throws a soda at Sam. Yeah, that chick's sick. So fucking cool. <clears throat> yeah, fuck, dude, fuck the man. Yeah, throw sodas at people. Was this Glee? Also, she threw a soda so she's accusing of killing somebody else. I know. That, yeah, you know I'm not going to say an eye for an eye leaves the world blind. They might kill me afterwards. I'm not doing that. That's all such a wise are and shit. You acted. It's, you're, it's stupid. Stupid, stupid. Dumb, 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 dumb. <laughs> it's dumb, 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 dumb. Oh, my God. Also, you know what's the coolest part of the whole entire movie? We have to see the return of Tara's infamous inhaler. I don't know. We didn't see the return. She never used it in the last movie. We heard all about it. That's but she true. never used it. This was the first and actual sighting of Tara's infamous It was pretty cool, man. That one's for the awesome. fans. That awesome. one was for the fans. You know what? That was the one. The that's one the fans appreciate. Thank you, James Vanderbilt. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Jim Jam. That was the first time I actually was like, this movie might turn around. And no, then, then they ruined it because then then Chad and Tara start talking. It's like I didn't even know you guys were friends. I know. I didn't know they liked each other. I, didn't I had no idea. I, I I and friends also, friends. I had no idea Chad found Tara to be so quote special unquote. Did he say unquote? I don't remember. It sounds like something. No, he, he just he 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 gave her the, he gave her the charm. He's like, hey, Tara, I think you're. And in his head, he's like, shit, I only have like two seconds to think of an adjective. Mm -hmm. Uh, awesome. No, special, special. I think you're so special. And yeah, Tara was like, wow. Two seconds, and she was staring. No at one's ever called me special before. <laughs> That's such a unique compliment. And then he's like, thanks. You want to blow me? Well, she's like, you really understand me. You said I'm special. So. I gotta use that line sometime, man. I've always been spending too much time dancing around the question with these big words, clearly compensating for something. And I just, I just need to say something like, hey. I, Tara, you know, I always thought you were really special, right? So, like, like, what do you mean by that? My friends call me Nova. Is As in Casa? Casa Nova? Honestly, if fucking Chad said that, dude, if that's Chad a said that, Chad reference. takes the cake for best character in the franchise, dude. Yeah, he already might take the cake, dude. What? I thought he already might, he might take have the it. Cake. There's a chance. I don't know. We have to see the sex scene. I'm fearful <laughs> that the, the, the first time Chad and Jenna embrace is going to be some more real fireworks with Fabio Chad you saying, the... Tara, you such awesome boobs. They're just so awesome. Special, special, special. No, he's going to say, it's just it's stupendous. Perfect nipple place. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> your, tits are, your tits are stupendous. <laughs> your tits are stupendous. Perfect nipple placement. This is just Jason Takes Manhattan. Why not then just reference the next Jason? Do it movie? as well, man. And that, that that is though. That's a big if. That's that's a big if. Is it to, if he ever fucks her? Because the last time a girl tried to have sex with him, he ran away from her faster than a fat man who fell down too fast. <laughs> it's true. Remember that his girlfriend's like, "Hey, I think I'm ready." He's like, "Oh, uh, I'm not." <laughs> and, Bye. And, and he got stabbed. And he got stabbed ninety-seven times. Lived. And he's still a virgin. You know why he's way more enjoyable in this one, though? He has a purpose. He likes Tara. Last yeah. night, he was just some jerk off walking yeah. around saying, Some guy was like, hey, I got Thelma and What do you say? What do you call his arms in the last one? Thelma oh, and Louise. Oh, no, I wish it was saying. Thelma and Louise. That would have been tight as shit. In Scream 5, he's like, hey, Hobbs and Shaw. <laughs> so Hobbs stupid. and Shaw. It's like, say fucking Dom and Brian and let's put the pieces together. Don't say Hobbs and Shaw because it's the name of the movie, you dumb piece of shit. Well, that's what I just did my thumb. The fact that James Vanderbilt undeniably was writing that script and just went like, IMDb, what's in theaters? <laughs> Ah, huh, Hobbs and Shaw. Terrific. Playing at the Regal near me. Uh, three years ago it came out. Well, that takes a long time to write a script. So right. so smart. You just never edited it back. It's still a good joke. That's still, everyone's always talking. All the kids are talking about Hobbs and Shaw all the time. And then Roommate 7 walks in. <laughs> did I cock block you? Oh, I cock blocked you. Did I, did I block your cock? Did I block your cock from entering her cunt? Did I stop? Did I impede you putting your cock in her cunt? I think a little bit, yeah. Were you trying to tame the cunt and have her respect the cock? And then Chad, being the proper good boy, squirms in such vulgarities and gives us the most genuine, oh my gosh, stop saying cock. Because it's roommate number seven. We want to establish very early on that this girl's comfortable saying the word cock. <clears throat> Who's roommate number seven? Oh, I remember roommate number seven now. Uh, roommate number seven is sex positive Sally. I thought she was roommate number six. No. Okay. So then Sam, again, you know, we're after, after the whole cock talk, all right, <laughs> Sam, truly the least likable character. She gets her frustration out by dick riding Tara. She's dick riding, but Tara can. No sister of mine will be a whore, but she gets to sleep with a guy from so fucking uh, Sirens. How's that fair? I didn't know if you were going to catch that. I thought I was going to be the funny guy saying the Sirens bit later on. Thanks for How's that, fair? that one thing I had going for me. Just to clarify, Sarah, uh, Sam, who is, again, the most self-absorbed and uh, just hedonistic. <laughs> and also... Hypocrite as well. It's hard to get both H words in the same one. Yeah, but you know what? She does look good in a tank top. She was phenomenal in a tank top. Some very that's some very that's some like Sarah Connor in Terminator 2 shit right there. Yeah, dude. She looks just With like none Sarah of the Connor. character. 
with a lot more ass, which is pretty cool. I'd say a lot more character, actually. A lot more character. Realistically speaking, if you factor in the X over the Y and everything, it yeah. is probably more character. Yeah, 100%. You like, yeah, because it's parentheses, exponents. Yep. Multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So then you know, yeah, by definitely more character mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, that checks out. <sighs> and then uh, so Sam, like I said Sam's like uh, I'm gonna have sex with this guy, but Tara, no, no sister of mine will you know be lack such promiscuity. You know, been sick actually. If instead Sam, if instead in the beginning, instead of Sam tasing the guy in the balls, if Tara went up into the room and she's about to have sex, and Sam bursts out the window and goes, "Stop right there!" Mm -hmm. and the whole week's gonna be a fucking musical. That would, well, hey, you know, there's never maybe we're in New York, seven. baby. We are we in New York, here. and you know, hey, you know, they've never like earlier. They never, they never had an opening scene in a restaurant. They never, they never had a musical adaptation. Flip it on its head. Flip it on its head, James. You're the, that's why we brought you. You're, you're the idea guy. <laughs> and then this is going to honestly sound very mean because I said right here. I mean, I, I'll, I will spoil it. I come around on Chad in this movie, but at this point, I'm still hating him from the fifth movie. Mm. So very, I'm not going to say quote unquote. You know, it's, not, it's not current day Alex thing. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is. Little knowing Alex, all right. This is this is this is that dumb loser Alex who just wasn't in the guy. He's just a guy who didn't know. There's guys who's known. There's guys who don't know. And this was a guy who didn't know. And now there's a guy who does know. You, my friend, are a guy who. And now knows. I'm a guy who knows. I wrote Chad's such an annoying twerp. And, <laughs> and I've changed my stance. But he, I, he, I think he didn't have sex with his super hot innocent girlfriend in Scream Five, not because he was being good, because he has erectile dysfunction. Quite and possibly. because he's an Olympic loser, and that shines very clearly in this plot as he shoves, <laughs> as once the killer comes in there, he shoves Sam's plot device out of the apartment saying, get out of here, and he screams. <laughs> when the killer comes into the apartment, the Chad, the tough guy, the savior, what does he do? He shoves Sam's little fucking, you know, uh, crutch, Tara. Yep. He throws her outside <laughs> the apartment. And he shoves her. He's like moving to safety. Yeah, he he's like, hey, threw her. whoa. <laughs> and he kicks her ass out of there. She falls down a flight of stairs. And he slams the door shut. It's like, that's our hero? What a, <clears throat> I need a hero. Yeah, what a man. <clears throat> and then um, then the movie really, then the movie does something which is crazy. I never thought I would see. I never thought something so crazy could happen. Mm. Dermot Mulroney. That's our cop. You mean Everett? Pro yeah, yeah. Prom night. <laughs> got Idris Elba. And Scream 6. They got they got they got to they got to, they got to one up that one. I thought you know as far as the big actors playing the cops in the movies, that it's, it's gonna be prom night, right? Yeah. Turns out it's very simple. All you need to do is get to Scream Six, and finally, I'm assuming the going to be in all of them. Finally, Dermot's like, "All right, seems like a pretty steady franchise. I'd love to be a part of it." <laughs> he only agreed because it was finally at six. He's like, "I got a lot of good ideas for the script, James." And James is like, "I am so excited to hear them." <laughs> That's great. Cause I have no ideas. <laughs> I, Neither I, do I. <laughs> and this is when uh, this is the part where Robbie got to say just immediately. Well, Dermot Mulroney's the killer, and he's definitely Richie's dad. Thanks, man. After though, dude. After admit, previously saying the guy from Sirens is totally the killer, and he's totally Richie's brother, which is also after saying that the roommate in the short shorts is totally the killer, and she's definitely Richie's sister, and she is. So make up your fucking mind, chuckle fuck. You know what so sucks though? You're right. I called it 20 minutes in, kind of correct. I kind of just suspected. I got the sibling part yeah, though. Yeah, you got that on. part. You're like, oh, they're doing a whole like, uh, you know, fucking Leatherface has got a whole family. Yeah, but you know what? When we finally got to the reveal, it was not satisfying in the fucking least bit. I was actually you mad. Know what I was wasn't satisfying. Correct. What? I never deleted his contact. Why the fuck not, Sam? That's such a dumb, stupid, arbitrary thing. That seems like the first thing you would do. It's quite literally the first step of being girl 101 is you get in a, any kind of fight with the guy. First thing you're doing, blocking, unfollowing, yeah, deleting. Yeah, yeah. This guy, you sour on him fast. This guy attempted to murder. And you're like, I just never got around to deleting his, deleting his contact. I just, I just kept in there as a reminder for all my pain and trauma. <laughs> Showing that I'm larger than he is. What doesn't kill you right, makes yeah, you that's stronger. Great. Well, that, that's, that's one of the loser that moments. That should have been the ending track to this movie. What the fuck? They dropped the ball no, on, on all fronts. One. You're going to sit there and fess with how dorky of a reference that was, you stupid bitch. <laughs> no, that was... What a dumb... Honestly, man, <clears throat> this movie is just... This franchise is so lazy. It's sloth to the max. It really is. <laughs> they know it's shit, and instead of writing better, like I've said a dozen times, Jamie Vanderbilt's just like, fucking... I'll simply acknowledge the error of my ways. Surely that will bring me enough favor. It's like confession. It's like, yeah, but just to be better after you confess, I'll just keep being a shitty. You can't just say, like, oh, I fucking, yeah, I, I, I beat the shit out of, like, ten people this week. All right, fine. Say ten Hail Marys, one for each of them. All right, sweet. Next week, I beat, like, 20 people. 
what the hell? It's 10 last week. Well, I figure if it's only 10 <laughs> prayers, I can do 20 <laughs> prayers. I can do fucking 50 prayers. Can you not curse in a confession? <laughs> fuck, my bad. You did it again. Shit. Sorry. Fuck. Fuck. Sorry. Shit. Fuck. And then it's just an hour of that because he can't control himself. And then, all right. Well, fucking. Now you got me saying it. Shit. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Where's it say in the Bible you can't fucking curse? <laughs> Where the fuck they say that, huh? I don't fucking see that anywhere. I didn't see, I didn't see the word say fuck any nowhere. What the fuck? <laughs> Quote, uh, I want you to think long and hard about whether you really want to do this or not because the last people to fuck with us ended up dead. <laughs> um, you, you know these people are going to, they're, they're going to, they're going to kill you and your sister, right? Did you forget about that again? Mm -hmm. That the person on the phone who you're egging on quite possibly has to jump on you right now and you're just going to say, hey, fucking bitch, <laughs> little loser. <sighs> you and Tara better watch your backs. You better watch yours. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Shit. Whoa. Mm -mm -mm. Ghostface comes out of nowhere. <laughs> Stabs Tara, but thankfully, you know, Miss 411, Jenna Ortega, always has her guard up from being jumped from behind. Thankfully, asthmatics have such great reaction skills. Akin to like spidey senses. She must be like inhaling steroids or something. And it, it, well, it is a steroid in it. it that's what, that's oh, yeah, what an inhaler right. is. Are that's why she's so strong. That's why she's so strong. And now she's fought off Ghostface because he got the jump on her with a knife out and somehow she just said, ah, look at this. And she dodged him. Maybe being that short, you just can't. Let's go. We're in New York. So let's go. Since we fended off Ghostface, let's go find shelter in this nearby bodega because we're in New York. We're in New York after all. And there's alleyways and bodegas all over the place. We're going, and it's like, that's sick, guys. Way to, way to use your backdrop to the max. I wonder if there'll be a scene in a subway at some point. <gasps> Don't say it. I think they do it. And also, it almost tricked me into being cool, though. It did for a split second, seeing a killer just walk into a store and start slashing those Dude, two men. I disagree men. 100% with and this And of course, movie. they're just saying it was two more male victims. You're not slick. This is, this is not a diverse kill chart. And then the store owner, who is, <laughs> who is trained enough to have a shotgun ready... But not trained enough to know. New Don't York. say hey before shooting it. Just blast his fucking brains off. End the movie, dude. It's New York. This movie is so stupid already. Have a third. First off, this movie is so dumb. Honestly, they should have just had that cop blow his fucking brains off and just have a third set of killers be introduced. <laughs> I know. We're at the thirty-minute mark. We might as well have a third set of killers be brought into the film. Everybody should be. Everybody's a suspect. Everyone's a suspect. Everybody should be in the killer. There should be in a fucking cult surrounding ghost face. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All cult of New York was yeah, into fucking sure. it. This movie has no balls. They've been neutered. So, you know, and also, really, they have no balls. We, they've been neutered. We see the friend cut up in the fridge, but we don't get to see the store manager. They, they cut away from that. Why don't we see his head go shot with the buck? Why don't we see his head go splat with the buckshot? It's a horror movie. Instead, what we get to see is a cool, hey, guy, whoosh, flip the gun around, but then we just said they cut away from the violence. Now you're, now you're pulling back punches. Well, it's only a... Uh... PG ho, ho, ho. Now I have a shotgun. That's sick, Ghost. Let's see you fucking use it. And also, why is he casted aside after that? That shit's not a hot gun. Take it with you. That's not even your gun. They're going to the guy you killed. That's a really good point. It's good as gold. And it's worth gloves. its weight in gold. I don't know, man. I thought really that scene was really that, stupid and weird. That if, scene uh, was stupid and weird. It felt like the Jurassic Park scene, but instead of the Velociraptors, it was Ghostface with a shotgun. Yeah, it felt fucking... I don't understand why this feels so... It's easy to harp on this movie for being so shitty, but like for just the whole New York element feels so uncomfortably wrong for this setting of this movie. And I don't get it, because you just pointed out none of these movies take place in Woodsboro, but the first one, apparently. And I and guess the fourth, the fourth one. one. And parts of... Parts of one of them. Regardless, who, who cares? Three it's kind a, of a, pseudo does with the, the whole sets. It's fake. It's yeah, you're right. Fairy dust. You're not wrong. Okay, my point is, though, it feels so fucking bad, and I hate that scene. It just doesn't make sense for Ghostface. Good contribution. Thanks, man. <laughs> you know what else doesn't make sense? Why Patrick Dempsey isn't the detective? You know, the one who the one who attacked us had a different mask. It was beat up like it was older. Afraid of you? Why would I be afraid of you? <laughs> it's the same dialogue. Uh, yeah, the one who attacked us had a different mask. It was, like, beat up, almost like it was older. How the fuck did you notice that at nighttime? Beats the shit out of... Oh, they're in a bodega. Part, no, yeah, the most the well lit parts of uh, the city. And then we get a special agent, Kirby Reed, FBI. I work out of the Atlanta office. Yeah, why don't you fuck yourself in your stupid, dumb fucking face? I work in the FBI office in Atlanta. Nothing could be dumber. Oh, n nothing. <laughs> nothing. Oh, wait, never mind. Sam walks past and says, Kirby? And Kirby says, oh, hey, Sam. It's dumber. Right, they know each dumber. other. Suddenly, it's dumber. And also, thank God they clarify. They, they make sure to say, oh, yeah, when... uh." Yeah, uh, how do they know each other, James? That's a good question. I just wrote it in. I just wrote, she says, hey, Sam, and she says, hi, Kirby. And like, yeah, 
that implies they know each other. How 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 do they know each other? He's like, oh. Well, they said hi. Well, they said hi. So that <coughs> she said hi, Sam, and she said hey. She said she hi, hey, Kirby. They established they know each other. What more yeah, do you we, want? They said both their names. No, 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 James. They said each other. They said the other person's name. How do they know each other's names? Didn't you just say, hey, James, we know each other. What more do you want? Yeah, but I met you. Where these characters meet? Is it, just oh, now. that's what you're asking me. Um, No, I guess I guess Sam was a freshman during Scream 4. It checks out mathematically. So in Scream 4, she's a freshman, which means she, that's 2011. So that means she graduates, they're saying, in 2015. Yeah. So she graduates in 2015, and Scream 2 comes out in 2020. Two, that's seven years later, but she left high school immediately and only gone for five years from Jenna Ortega. Uh huh. So we're missing two years here. They made her too old. You know, congratulations! You this movie fucked up. Looks like they made Judy Hicks a son. No, no, dude. When you do all the drugs, you you, you just lose whole years of your that's life. True, you, you lose whole years. I forgot about Sam doing all of the drugs. You think it's like hard? Just be, I don't even remember those years. Shit, shit dream. I haven't had one of those in years. <laughs> And then it's also school. G- Jesus Christ, guys. It's, it's the ghost face killer from 2011. We get it. We get it. We get it. We get it. She's from Scream 4 that came out in 2011. Don't know why Kirby's telling us that. I don't, know this, I don't even know what this whole meaning and this message of this goddamn contrived, stupid ass. Uh, they're using all the masks from the previous movies. Why? And also, for a universe where for Stamp what? is the for franchise, what? why are you constantly referencing Scream? I know, man. It's crazy. Scream doesn't exist. You're supposed to be referencing the fucking movie Stab. And also, why are they only acknowledging the Scream, the Stab movies? Didn't the main, didn't you say in the Latin Scream for that, like after Stab 4, they just kind of went crazy and started making original stories? Travel. So why the hell are you, where are those masks? Anyway, I don't know. Sam, Sam's, you know, the two-faced bitch that she is. She couldn't be more excited to see that one girl she passed in the hallway from high school, you know? Mm-hmm. But, then, but then a second later, we have to have a shoehorned, you know, way of nat. I'm sorry, I don't know why I said you. A natural way of getting Kirby in the game. So I'm sorry, she's going to work natural. the case with Sam, but then Sam shoots it down and storms off. What are you? <laughs> is she? You walked past her and felt the need to say hey, but then when she says I love to help, he's like, get the fuck away from me, you weirdo! I hated you in freshman year. Sam doesn't need your fucking help. And then why'd you talk to her in the first place? Fucking also, they make a point of saying Kirby's like I specialize in ghost face killings. You specialize in the one so you haven't ghost had a, face killing the, as since far the as, last as, time. I was say, as far as we know, there's been the ghost face killing that happened to you where you yeah. weren't a cop, and then maybe you were a cop. By the time the next one happened, and that's it. And you have your own secret division in the She's FBI. She's like, yeah, uh, I'm actually, um, I'm actually uh, the head of the FBI. Actually, it's like, you know what? I'm gonna need some. I'm gonna need to see some serious credentials because now, right now, it's not, something smells a little fishy. She does the whole Arnold Schwarzenegger approach. She just grabs one of those toy badges, flaps it around, and then puts it back in her pocket. Thursday, she does the whole shotgun to the like the the cops, and that would have been cool if Kirby was like a Terminator. Now it's already gone off the deep end. Let's have her be a Terminator. <laughs> it's true. Well, the fifth one does have time travel, and that was right when we uh, stopped watching the movie. Because we were about like 40 minutes in and we were like, well, Yeah, that's but you're, you, we failed to mention that was also the third attempt to watch the movie. True, after like a we week watched, of wanting to do it. We watched the first 10 minutes and stopped for six days. Then we tried watching it again then stopped. This was the third attempt. It's not that bad, though. You should give it a shot. Yeah. It's actually, well, it really all comes around in the second 40 minutes, actually. Did we get to that part of the movie yet? Uh, No, I guess that's going to be like the uh, fortunate to be part two. <laughs> Okay. So we, I mean, hey, if we have to suffer, keep watching for multiple days. I think you probably should as well. So, yeah. Ipso facto. Visa v. Quarter. Ad nausea.